Hey everybody, welcome to Dad's Den. I'm Dad, that all back there is my den. And today I want to talk about five things that really creeped me out when I was a kid. Um, and I use the term creeped rather than scared because these aren't things that kind of had me like, you know, screaming and crying and freaking out or anything. They were all little pieces of pop culture entertainment that just sort of unnerved me. You know, that you sort of get that tingling, you know, like the hair standing on end, the, the your, your mind opened up to vistas that you could not imagine kind of stuff. Yeah, it was that kind of thing. Um, and I grew up in my early years, in the late 70s. So there was plenty of things to creep you out in the late 70s. Sometimes without them even trying. Um, so I put these into uh, a, a list, five to one, and um, I'll kind of explain why I put them in that order as I go. Um, so without any further ado, five things that creeped me out when I was a kid. Now, number one, and get ready. This is this um, this is a high tech production, okay? Because honestly, I. I couldn't really, I don't have, I don't really have like a video editor. I know it seems impossible when you look at the quality of the films I produce. Um, but I don't, I really wasn't sure how to like input like little, um, uh, um, images into this yet. I got, I gotta, I gotta learn. Um, so I just printed things out on paper. So number five on my list, number five is kind of a tie and I'll explain why. Number five on my list is. The Edge of Night. All right, what is The Edge of Night? For those of you who are not aficionados of 70s soap operas, well, it was a soap opera in the 70s. It actually started in uh, 56, ran to like, I think, 84. Um, you know, when you were a, a kid growing up in the 70s, right, um, you got a house, you got one, maybe maybe two TVs, but usually one TV. At least we did, because we didn't have a ton of money. And, um, you know, when you were off school, Christmas vacation, Easter uh, break, um, uh, summer vacation, right? You know, you're, you're in the house a lot, especially because I grew up in Las Vegas, so, you know, it's like 115 degrees outside in the summer. And... Um, and so you don't have complete control over what you're watching. And uh, my mom had her soap operas that she watched, her stories. Uh, primarily, General Hospital, All My Children, uh, Days of Our Lives. So for a particular span of time, I have a really good knowledge of characters on those particular shows. Um, in fact, I think one of the first... Um, first women I ever kind of had a crush on um, was Emma Sams played Holly on General Hospital <laughs> I kind of remember that it was just that point where you kind of suddenly go hey girls are kind of neat um, so Edge of Night now this is why this is ranked number five on my list I have a very clear memory of a certain event on that soap opera and I cannot find any record that that event ever happened. None. I've looked and looked and looked. I don't know. If somebody else out there knows this to have actually happened, I would love to hear from them. I swear that it happened. But so there was a particular episode where a woman is getting married to a man. And it's like, if something happens or there was, I don't know, man, it was like something supernatural. And when he like takes her veil back, she has like the face of like a wicked witch. And this is like a really early memory for me. So, you know, maybe I was like four years old, five years old. I don't know. But I can just remember being like, <gasps> you know, kind of startled at that, right? Because, like, we, I, we, my parents didn't let us watch, like, really scary stuff when I was a kid at all. 
And of course, if you're four, you probably haven't seen a lot of scary, well, hopefully, hopefully you haven't seen a lot of scary stuff in your life. But here's the thing. I've looked. I can't figure it out. There was a woman on the show with the character called Raven. Ra Charlotte Raven Alexander uh, Whitney. And she was on, the character anyways, were on 76 to 84. So that puts it in the right time frame. And she was a witch. But I, I don't know that she had any kind of magical powers. I think she was just kind of like a witch, like, you know, like Wicca, sort of, maybe. Right? I, I don't know. This is something that creeped me out as a child that may not have actually happened. Maybe in my head, I gave her a witch because they said she was a witch, and I just assumed she was a witch. And when they were raising the veil, I'm like, oh, I don't want to. Uh. I don't know. I don't know. So it's number five on my list because, frankly, it might not have ever happened. Isn't that crazy? I can remember almost getting to the point where the the TV show that I thought I remembered seeing that had, like, Batman and Hawkman and The Flash and Green Lantern and all these people in it, I almost decided it was make-believe at some point, that I had invented it until I finally found... Like, I think it's Legends of the Superheroes. It was real. I mean, that was like, that was a big deal. Like, <laughs> I wasn't insane. Maybe I invented this. Maybe it did happen. If anybody out there is a big fan of the Edge of Night, let me know. Oh, also, I was looking at this picture from this wedding. Um, and this is this would not be that wedding. Um, is, is, that, is that the lady that played Judge Smale's wife in Caddyshack? I kind of think it is. And I know the dude right there with the mustache. Um, he, he, he was on, uh, he was on dark shadows, you know, see, you got to watch these videos to get this kind of just professional level, um, commentary. Okay. So because that fifth creepiest thing that ever happened when I was a kid may in fact not have happened. I have another number five. I have another, another number five. So the, the, I'm putting these in a tie. Now this definitely happened. So, in 1978, thanks to Canada, oh, it's upside down, beautiful, Witches Night Out ended up on my television set. Witches Night Out, dude, the design on that character creeped me out. Look at, look at that. Come on. That creeped me out. Now, I've since watched it. It's, look, it was in that period where animation was, like, getting kind of weird. Uh, very creative. Ralph Backshy. You had all these people. Remember, you'd see kind of weird sort of animation on Sesame Street and all that. We grew up with it. Um, but I can, re I can definitely remember just, it's in the number five position because it just sort of unnerved me. I wasn't totally digging it. And the other uh, um, the other characters were just drawn kind of oddly as well. It's like these kids and they get turned into monsters and, um, you know. And, okay, so the plus side, um, uh, Gilda Radner does the voice of the witch. God bless Gilda Radner. Um, uh, Catherine O'Hara, SCTV and many, many other things, does a voice on it as well. So, um, some, so some great voice talent, at least at a minimum. Um, but really just like, it kind of, it just really creeped me out as a kid, that witch. I can remember watching that one and this is the days where like, dude, if there was a special on like a primetime cartoon, you, you were in, I mean, it could be like a cartoon autopsy and we probably would have watched it because it's like, I don't care. It's at night and it's a cartoon. I get to watch a cartoon at night. I'm down. Because, look, in our day, man, eh, there were some cartoons that were on maybe early in the morning before school. but And there were some that were maybe on after school, but not a lot. Except, like, you know, you're watching a cartoon after school. Dad gets home. Click. Time for the news. And that's the end. You, you might not even see the end of it. Saturday morning was the cartoon block, right? That's when you got to watch cartoons. Mom and Dad gave you the TV for that morning. Mostly because they wanted to sleep. Um, but when a cartoon showed up at night, 
you got to watch it. That was awesome, right? So you got your Peanuts Halloween special and Christmas special and Thanksgiving special. And, you know, there were, there were a bunch of them, right? So, I mean, hey, it's a cartoon. I'm going to watch it. But I can definitely remember at the time going, I don't think I want to watch that again. That was that was creepy. All right, so that's in my number five position. Um, so number four, number four is all about timing. As I said, we didn't get to watch scary movies as a kid. And I didn't really want to watch scary movies as a kid because I was a coward. Um, and while I said most of these really just unnerved me, this one definitely unnerved me, but it was it was also kind of just plain old uh, scary. So one night, um, I can remember it was it was probably like getting towards, you know, like bedtime or whatever. It was, it was late. And by this time, uh, my parents had a TV in their bedroom as well as the TV that we had out in like the living room. And so my dad's in there watching TV. I go in to like ask my mom or dad something. I don't know what. And on the TV, oh yeah. And I walked in just as the head started turning around. Of course, this is Exorcist, 1973, Linda Blair. We're talking about it being on TV at some point. So, you know, who knows when that was, what what year it was. It wouldn't have been 73, obviously. Ah, uh, man, I could have even been early 80s. I don't know. All I know is I walked in, I saw that head turn around, and I genuinely felt the hair sort of standing up on end. And it was like, you know, and I don't even know if I asked the question. I might have just turned around and left. Because that, that creeped me out. Because I don't know if you know this, heads aren't supposed to turn all the way around. That's not supposed to happen. That, that bugged the hell out of me. Um, no nightmares that I can ever remember. It was, it was, it happened. It was quick. It was in, out, by. But I can remember my hair standing on end. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've ever watched Exorcist. I think the closest I've ever gotten is the, uh, the SNL bit with, uh, with um, shoot, Richard Pryor, which is pretty funny. If you haven't watched it, you might want to go look for that. Okay, this next one would have been in uh, 76. Yeah, had to have been about 76, 77, right in there. Well, it could have been repeats, but probably right around in there. So I was maybe around five years old. Um, as you know from the last episode, um, if you watched it, the March Toy Hall, um, Six Million Dollar Man. Loved the Six Million Dollar Man when I was a kid. And, of course, the Bionic Woman as well. Watched those shows every week, if I could. Um, season 2, Episode 5 was called Kill Oscar, Part 1, two-part episode. And Kill Oscar introduced maybe the most famous, you know, villains from that, from maybe from either of those series. Well, right next to, next to Bigfoot, and we're talking, of course, about the Fembots. Dude, I'm watching it. Boom, boom, okay, there's something going on. When that face plate came off, it was like it broke my brain. It's like, oh my God, do I have to worry about this? I'm five years old. I don't know, maybe there's fembots out there. Maybe this is a thing. People could be like robots underneath their faces. What the? The fembot freaked me out it still freaks me out a little bit it's residual freak out it's residual creepiness so embedded in my five year old brain that I can look at it now and go eh, that's a fembot who cares right except I kind of care a little bit man that really freaked me out and that's I, it's kind of almost a theme of some of these things with me it's like I had a brain that just sort of like this is reality this is what's real and then something new would come along. And instead of just going, oh, something new. Okay. It was always like, oh, what? I Hold on. I have to rewire my brain now because I have to make allowances for this. 
the fembots were oh, they were something that did that to me um they might have they might have gotten into my nightmares i'm not sure when we hit number one well, well you'll they might figure into number one to some degree um but yeah the fembots bionic woman not good okay this next one so like i said we didn't really get to watch scary movies per se but i mean this is like the 1970s because i definitely was maybe four or five for this one um late 70s is a movie from 1933 come on how scary could it be um we're talking oh yeah the original king kong original king kong i can almost remember my mother worrying about my dad letting me watch this movie and him saying it's going to be okay and i don't remember the movie per se like scaring me particularly but what i can remember is after the movie was over it's time to go to bed i can remember lying in bed and just like staring at the ceiling this is 70s vegas that was popcorn ceilings right if you know if you know what they are you know what they are and i can remember just staring at the scene thinking like what if there were like giant things that could just grab you i knew there weren't it wasn't like i was worried that that was going to happen but it was just it was the idea again it was like it opened my mind to a possibility what if there were giant things that could grab oh wow man it freaked me out now, fortunately, it didn't last. I love King Kong, Godzilla movies, and all that stuff. I was fine. But for that one night, it didn't feel like I slept the entire night. In truth, I was probably awake for like probably a half hour and then fell asleep. But you know how it is. When you're a kid, these you, you take these little things and you make them big things. You have no concept of time, right? But King Kong, he was so big. And that made me so small. And I'm looking at that ceiling. I'm just... <sighs> yeah, actually, if you don't know what a popcorn ceiling looks like... There. That's a popcorn ceiling right there. Yeah, it was done for, like, soundproofing. Um, and the negative is they have asbestos in them. Which was a good thing at one point, and then it became a bad thing when they found out what it could do. So just staring at that popcorn ceiling. And I can almost remember, like trying to count the little those little bumps those little like it really freaked me out that something could be that big Whew. king kong okay so king kong is number two on the list number one number one makes the number one slot because number one definitely impacted my dreams sort of gave me a nightmare and it was a repeated nightmare. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, oh, was this like some horror? Oh, what was it like, you know, some horror movie from the... No. You ready for this? Are you ready for number one? The number one thing that creeped me out as a kid. Madam. The Madam puppet created by Wayland Flowers creeped me out as a kid it creeped me out big time it was so weird looking and and madam if you don't know madam you're missing out on a prime piece of 70s pop culture she was i believe described by wayland flowers as an outrageous old broad um i believe uh, it was peter griffin a family guy uh, said something to the effect of, oh, madam, you sassy old gal. Um, she showed up in a lot of places. She showed up on Hollywood Squares. She took over the center square from Paul Lynn at one point. Um, she showed up on Solid Gold, music show where big stars would come on and lip sync to their records while... Um, Solid gold dancers did stuff behind them. 
There's a few of those on YouTube. You can go, yeah, you can go go look up Solid Gold. That's another piece of of 70s, 80s pop culture that is not to be missed. And what and so she'd be on there and she was, yeah, she's like telling sort of dirty jokes. Um, I mean, not dirty, dirty jokes, but, you know, uh, innuendo and all that stuff. She was like this old lady that, you know, was, uh, you know, raring to go. She was the, the Blanche Dubois of her day. And um, and she f- kind of, she freaked me out. She kind of creeped me out. She was always like, you know, if, she, if there was like a, a guy there she was talking to, she'd always have her head on his shoulder or kind of like be grabbing him with his arms. Okay, so, so the dreams. I didn't, I didn't really put it together that Madam was maybe at the heart of these dreams until I was in like my 40s. But I had these dreams I, it, several times. It was at the elementary school I went to. And that elementary school had, um, it had like the asphalt playground where the, like the basketball courts were and stuff. And then it had the grassy area and there was kind of a slope on the grassy area that went down to a flatter area. And in the dream, I'm in that grassy area below the kind of the bottom of the slope. And it almost, it's like it's a field day or something because my parents are there with this woman. So I go over to them, and it's like they know who this woman is, like she's an like an aunt or something. I don't know, but they definitely and they want me to say hi to her and give her a hug. Except I look at her, and she's like a mannequin. She's a mannequin, but like she can talk and move. And like, it's like, they don't see this. They don't see that she's a mannequin. I do. I can tell. And I'm like, I don't know who this is. This is not a family member. What are you doing? Now, the weird thing is, this this mystery lady was perfectly nice. Like, it wasn't like she wanted to hurt me or something, but it was just sort of like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to touch you. I don't want to touch you. I, oh, and they're like, what are you doing? Just give her a hug. I don't, I don't want to touch her. I had that many times, and it was somewhere in my 40s one day. I think maybe I saw something with Madam, and it suddenly like triggered that memory of that dream. And it's like, oh, my God. I think some, because the face was kind of Madam-esque. Yeah. Madam got into my 40s friggin' dreams. Now the Fimbots, they could have had something to do with it too because they're like, they look like humans but they're not really humans and they're not really made out of, you know, they're made out of plastic. Right? How creepy is that to imagine somebody like a body uh, with silicone, never mind. Um, No, so Madam and maybe the Fimbots, maybe joined forces. Wonder Twin Powers activate to create this nightmare that I had. And I don't remember waking up like screaming or crying or anything, but definitely waking up and being like, oh, I don't think I can go back to sleep. I don't think I want to go back to sleep. And again, you're a kid, so you know, you're probably asleep 15 minutes later, but at the time, horrifying. Madam. Funny thing though is, now I'm an old man, and we were watching uh, a solid gold that was on YouTube, and Madam was on there, and and she was killing me. And she had a sitcom in uh, 1982. Madam had a sitcom called Madam's Place, and so I put it on um, because I'm like, All right, this has got to be, a, this has got to be a disaster, right? Had, I think Julie Landers is on it, one of the Landers sisters. And I was watching it, and I'm like, oh, I'm actually laughing at this. I, I think I'm a fan of Madam's Place. So that's the nice thing. Madam gave me nightmares when I was five. But now that I'm 50, me and Madam, we're okay. We came together. We came together. So um, God bless Madam. God bless Waylon Flowers. Those are the five things, well, I guess six technically, maybe, that creeped me out when I was a kid. 
the witch that may not have existed on Edge of Night, Witch's Night Out, the head spin from Exorcist, the Fimbots on uh, Bionic Woman, King Kong, and the Grand Dam of My Nightmares. Madam. Oh, you saucy old gal. Okay, so um, there we go. What pop culture creeped you out when you were a kid? I don't mean like scared you, like, you know, run away. I just mean like, whoa, what is, no, you know, kind of gave you nightmares and stuff. Uh, love to hear about it in the comments, you know, unless, of course, it's going to like trigger a major, you know, psychological episode for you um but yeah sure throw it in the comments let me know what you think did any of the things that creep me out did they also creep you out if you're gen x they might have i don't know if you millennial maybe you didn't see these but you have your own your own list of nightmares um if you enjoyed the video i'd love it if you'd hit a uh, like um, hey it doesn't cost you anything does a lot of good for me if you enjoy these little trips down pop culture memory lane um I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel, uh, which also helps me out. And um, hey, with that, I'll be back soon enough with another episode of Dad's Den of Pop Culture. Um, hope you have a good day. Be kind to other folks, and I will see you later.